coming up on today's episode, I'm going to refurbish the calipers on my 2013 Porsche Cayenne. First thing you need to do is safely jack up the car and remove the wheel. I've said this before and I'll say it again, if you don't know how to safely jack a car up and remove the wheel, then YouTube is not the place to learn. There are many things that can go wrong and safety should always be your number one priority. Remove the wheel and put it somewhere safe, you're going to need it again later. This is a crusty caliper we're going to be dealing with today. After years of visiting the local scratch and go car wash and probably having neat wheel acid and TFR thrown at them, the calipers look terrible. The bare aluminium is tarnished and there's no rescue in this finish. The first stage of any caliper refurb is to remove as much of the crusty brake dust as possible. My preferred method is a wire brush. You can use a hand wire brush or even one attached to a drill to save time, but just remember to take care when doing so. Even if the areas look clean, still brush them over as you want to make sure that you remove any loose debris and get a good surface for the paint to stick to. Preparation is the key here. A few extra minutes spent will pay off later in the paint finish. Get into as many of the areas as you can. Now to get the perfect finish, you can remove the caliper from the car or just remove the brake pads, which will give you the opportunity to get paint into the areas that it's just not possible to do with them in. I don't have that luxury in this instance. I don't have the right tools to remove the caliper and so I'll have to make the best job I can. It's not going to be concourse, but it'll look a damn sight better than it does before. Whilst brushing, just take care not to dislodge or damage any sensors or cables. Now if you're refurbishing this type of caliper with writing on there, you need to remove it as otherwise it will be raised up in the paint finish afterwards. Using a blade, scrape the painted lettering off the caliper. In an ideal world, this is how I would have chosen to reapply the lettering, but unfortunately time was not on my side with this job. Once you've scraped them off, sand the surface as smooth as you can. I used 240 grit paper, then I scuffed over the remainder of the caliper with it. You can go up in grits to get a smoother finish, but caliper paint's quite thick, so it won't make too much of a difference. After this, use a solvent brake cleaner or isopropyl alcohol to clean the caliper completely. On these Brembo calipers, it seems like the Porsche logo has been etched into the surface, which means we can't get it 100% smooth. But by removing the lettering, we can make it a lot less noticeable and it also gives us a marker for where to put the new lettering. Next up, mask everything you don't want to get paint on. Use masking tape on the sensors, wires, springs and pads and plastic sheeting or bin bags to mask off larger areas. Here I went a little overboard, but as you can see it started raining and the wind was really strong and I didn't want to get overspray going onto the car. I'd recommend trying to find a slightly calmer day. Shake the paint can for a few minutes and then apply a dust coat of paint from around 8 to 10 inches away. Don't try to cover the caliper with the first coat and don't worry if the paint is still see-through. Just use long and even strokes. Then, leave it for about 10 minutes. As a side note, I started painting these in glorious sunshine and had already done one side. Then, when I came to do this side, it kept raining. Anyhow, onto the second layer. Build up the paint a little more and you'll notice that the paint now starts to cover a lot better and it's a lot less transparent. The third coat can be what's called more of a wet coat. This is where you get the smooth finish, but it's also where you can get the runs. So carefully build up the finish to a smoother surface, but don't apply too much paint in one area and this will give you a glossy finish. Leave the paint to dry for about 30 to 45 minutes. Now onto the lettering. If you're not putting lettering on, skip this bit, but stay tuned as there is another step to finish the job. I'm replacing the original Porsche lettering. I've cut these decals on my vinyl cutter to match the original sizes, but you can easily buy them from places like eBay and car accessory websites. Because you can just about see where the original Porsche text was, it gives us something to aim for. On the rear caliper, I used a fine line tape to mark the bottom of the text and the left of the letter P for perfect alignment, but this was done after the caliper had dried for 24 hours. Don't do this when the paint is only 45 minutes old, as it's still too soft. I also used clear application tape on that one, which really helped. Anyway, align the decal to the caliper. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get it 100%. There's not a straight line reference point and nothing to tell you whether it's straight or not. 
Having another person help line them up can be helpful though. Put the decal on, but don't press too hard. Just let it stick and then remove the application tape. The paint is still soft and you don't want to mark it. Then just gently press the lettering on to make sure that they are stuck. Final stage, clear coat. Making sure that there's no dust or dirt that's found its way onto the caliper, you can start to clear coat the paint. Again, start with a dryish coat over the whole caliper. You can either apply two or three coats of clear, with your last coat being a wet coat for the gloss. Now, clear coat is thinner than paint, and it's even more likely to produce runs or sags in the finish. I got two runs on this caliper, but don't panic, leave them to dry and they won't be too noticeable, and will dry clear. Runs will always happen in the last coat after the one where you look at the paint and think, that looks great, shall I give it one last coat? The one last coat is like the one last beer, you should never do it, walk away if you're happy. Anyway, leave the whole thing to dry for about 10 minutes, then carefully remove the masking. I prefer to remove it when the paint is still slightly tacky, as it doesn't rip where the tape meets the paint. Marvel at your handiwork and pat yourself on the back, because these calipers look one million times better than they did before. Well done you! Now, where did you put that wheel? Go and find it and put it back on. You're going nowhere without it, and you'll need a frame for your spanking refurbished caliper. Hope you found this video useful, if you have, give it a thumbs up. If there's anything else that you need to know, put it in the comments below. Don't forget to tick subscribe, click the bell to be notified, and I'll see you next time. Have you ever felt Are you listening? Damn. Yeah.